Hello everybody and we are in Bishop Stortford. Um, is Bishop Stortford in Essex? I never know. Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire. Hearts Essex Boulder. Lovely, lovely. And we are joined here by James Batty of Auto Finesse. And uh, I just wanted to, to sit down for a little interview and talk to James about James, about Auto Finesse and about the future. If that's all right. Um, so, Auto Finesse, when did it start? Um, started in 1999, just as myself balloting cars, basically. Before detailing kind of existed in this country, we were just cleaning cars and started off a very sort of grassroots to that, full KAs and things like that. Yeah. General maintenance, washing. So even the service side was yep. still called Auto Finesse at the time? Um, it was JB's originally. Yeah. Me initials. Very Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Creative. That's never been done before. <laughs> And then we, we progressed from that on to what we are today. Also, Finesse come about when we made a move into sort of more high-end detailing and more specialist services. We gained quite a good reputation myself and a guy who worked for me. We've got a good reputation, got a good customer base, and we started moving into more high-end cars. And from that, we kind of done a, a bit of a brand switch and went for something a bit more high-end. And my brother actually helped design this place. <laughs> we were going through names, and he said, what about Auto Finesse? And, that's it, kind of stuck from there. And then, well, as many of you will know, it's about one of the strongest brands out there in terms of brand recognition. In terms of, you can tell the bottles from 200 paces, and you know that that's auto finesse. And you guys work really hard at shows. I mean, every show we go to, James or your team or both. Uh, Not are always there. myself. Sometimes mm -hmm. the, the crew that are here, yeah. But they bring a stuffed version of yourself, don't they, at the distance? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> I think it has to stick pins in. No. <laughs> um, yeah, we do a lot of shows. We've done about 58 shows last year oh, um, so, so that's more than one a week well sometimes we've got a team at one and a team at another on the same day so we'll do two teams we've even done three shows in a weekend before so we try and get out and about as much as we can whether it's a big event a small event yeah local classic car meets and all sorts of I was about to say because you do I mean obviously uh, Auto Finesse is associated with the double scene and the, the kind of cool young people yeah. but I've seen you at the NEC Classic full of old uh, chronologically enhanced Ooh. people who, <laughs> who enjoy MGVs more than anyone else yeah we, we go Go there as well. Uh, it's not part of our, our forte or a scene that we're that clued up with, but we go there, we get involved in, in kind of everything. Anyone who's interested in cleaning the car and making it look better than it currently does, um, they're our customers, so exactly. that's who we go and see and, and put the products in front of them and see what they think of them. That's cool. Uh, I must excuse the sound, we're very close to Stansted Airport and I've seen all sorts of aircraft going up and down, so that's all that is. Um, and so now Auto Finesse is growing and growing and this is the culmination of it. We'll yep. talk about this academy uh, soon. Uh, how many employees do you have now? Um, we're knocking on the door of about 30 at the moment wow. um, between the factory site and here. Obviously this being new, we've just got two employees here for the time being that will be based here. Um, Joe for the detailer training and then Sam who will kind of manage the place and then we're going to build from that. We will have our marketing and media team as well upstairs in, in the offices yeah. here um, because this is where we can do more of that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so just to get to know James a little bit better, I've seen your current car is a 911991 GTS. Yep. Yeah. Um, what did you have, what's been your favourite car in your career? Um, probably this. Uh, mainly because we built it ourselves um, and it was built on a very tight budget when wow. it was like hand to mouth days we were selling products and mm. we'd make a little bit of profit and we put it into this project and it was something we wanted for a long time um, myself and Simon guy who's pressing the button on this camera he's pressing the buttons <laughs> well sort of <laughs> he's pressing we've his got, own buttons at the yeah. we don't want to talk about that <laughs> we built it in an old chicken shed um, and yeah we, we done what we could with what we had and yeah. That's this, it's kind of come the face of the brand for us. It's, it's done the rounds, we've driven it to Germany, Belgium, all over the place. So yeah. this is still my favorite. I, obviously, I like the newer cars to drive around in, but they haven't got the kind of same soul or same connection with those cars as I have this one. I have to admit, this is, this is a Caddy? Yep, Mark 1 Caddy. Mark 1 Caddy, and it's got a 3.2 water cool by the looks of it. Yep. Hawker engine in it. Yep. So does it go like stink or is it a bit rattly? Yeah, it's a bit scary to drive. It's fast and rattly, so it's a bit <laughs> both. It's, yeah. Character, I think, is what they're called. Mm. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Not quite refined. It's no, but hey, hey it's living life. Um, okay, so let's go on to this. This is the Detailing Academy. Today yep. was your open day. Yep. And I have to first of all say congratulations because this place, um, James was, I imagine, at the drop of out, you could get a thousand people in here blocking everything up, but James actually did the sensible thing and was careful who he selected. Yeah. He selected, you know, nice people and, and me, strange enough. <laughs> He's regretting uh, it. Yeah, to make an exception. <laughs> yeah, quite. Um, and I reckon you had, what, 200 people through the doors today? So yeah, we, did, we haven't had a proper count, but yeah, it was mm -hmm. probably knocking on the door of 200. It was nice because there was a bit of a, a churn of people. Some people come in the morning, yeah. left after a couple of hours. 
crowd and then people come in the afternoon so we noticed in the car park that the cars changed around quite a bit which was nice obviously you don't need to be here for four or five hours just on an open day to have a look around so people might have poked their head in for an hour or so on a Sunday have a look around and leave but it was manageable it was and what was really nice was actually there was a real diversity of people I was expecting it all to be slammed v-dubs um, yeah, a lot of people make that conception about sort of the brand and that's mm. all we're about but we're actually car enthusiasts and we do reach a wider market it's just the biggest kind of market and scene at the moment is the whole sort of stance scene and we do have a lot of cars that are on air so yeah that's we're, true. yeah people make that that assumption that that's all we're about but we're not we've we've got customers of all ages we've even got yeah. kids that can't even drive yet like 14 15 they're into detailing and then we've got older guys that are sort of retired and they're into detailing as well so it was a good mix here as we said normally at these events i'm about the old, oldest person wandering around and there are some you know you've done all right today yeah yeah I was, I was kind of mid, mid range i'd describe it as. <laughs> um so this detailing academy your idea is to create a training center for the enthusiast detailer am i yeah. right now? so that's our market that's who we aim at um we're about car enthusiasts who want to detail their cars so it's focused around bringing them in teaching them how to get the best from our products and also teaching them tricks and tips and techniques to further the finish on their own cars um, we don't want it to be too preachy so it's more laid back and as you'll see we've got, we've got the coffee shop vibe and we've got the bays and it's set out to be kind of homely for people so they come in they're just laid back and it's a nice day I think people taking information better like that as well than it being very sort of classroom based and a bit too regimented so but at the same time what i really like is you've got all the kit I and mean, the detailing bay behind us has got a beamer m4 in there and it is absolutely stunning both the bay and the car thank you um, and it's not, my car. It's, not <laughs> no, it's not my car well i've been taking some photos of it so it will likely appear in the next issue um, and then in there you've got more of a working environment with yep. the uh, required black walls now which is very trendy in the detailing environment yeah, everyone likes black walls it used to be all white house now it's all black, black that's all switching pans, yeah. <laughs> Um, and in there you've got all sorts of different kit now in terms of the auto finesse range I'm guessing you've, you've got compounds and that so you can have yep. auto finesse from start to finish yep and that's not all that we're going to kind of teach people on we do have other machines and even other compounds within the mm. range so we give people a chance to try everything that's out there um, we don't we understand that most detailers will use a range of different products and not just one brand there are some people who are very brand loyal mm -hmm. and we like that and we appreciate it but we don't expect it and we don't want to kind of limit ourselves by just saying this is the only thing to use we like people to be able to compare our products to other products and mm -hmm. see what works for them sometimes what we think is great and will work for 50 percent of people the other 50 percent like something else mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. Well, it's very refreshing that because a lot of manufacturing environments, you know, when you go in the training, it's very much that manufacturer. And if you want a compound, it has to be our compound. Yeah, uh, don't get us wrong. On a, if you come for like a product masterclass day, then it is going to be just our product because we're going to be teaching you about the product, why we produced it, where it sits in the market, how to use it, and the other sort of benefits and attributes they have. But for the actual training, especially at the professional level, we understand these guys will be using different bits and bobs, so we do have our own machines. We have a variety of Roots machines, Flex machines, Milwaukee machines, um, all sorts of stuff in the base. So they get to try everything, see what works for them. Absolutely, and, and when I arrived here, in fact, uh, you were just uh, publishing the menu of the different courses that are available, mm -hmm. and there are two things that really stood out to me. One is that you can bring your own car and be taught how to do detailing on that car. Yes. And that was, what, three or four hundred quid, something yeah, like that? Yeah, three nine five for the day. Um, you bring your own car and you get taught on your own car how to detail it so those days will be tailored to you and your kind of experience level and, and what you already know and what you need to brush up on but it'll also be tailored around your car so we'll inspect it together we'll do the wash stage and decon stages together and then once it's in the bay we're not saying we'll finish a car in a day mm -hmm. we can't fully detail your car in a day especially if it's if you need training as well. yeah. exactly but we'll be able to send you away with the skills and the knowledge of how to tackle your car and fully finish it. Which in a way is more valuable. In yeah, terms of exactly. It's so you, yeah, once you wash it wrong a couple of times in a rush on a Sunday morning, we can <laughs> sort it out. <laughs> and, and that, I guess, by definition is one-to-one -one training. Yep, um, one-to-one -one training. We can have two of those on the go at the same time because um, a trainer can also go between two, but we've got gotcha. two trainers on site, so you can go between the two bays as well. So on that basis, it's actually really good value as well, because there are a lot of courses that are about the same sort of money, yep. and quite often it's a group of anywhere up to sort of five or six people sometimes. Exactly, yeah. So that so makes sense. You can sense. bring friends along with you on those courses as well. So, I don't know, some show cars are owned by a couple of people, or you might have a mate who's interested in the training as well. Uh, extra £100 you can bring an extra person with you, and you can go up to four people on those courses. Oh, and brilliant. it includes lunch for the day and, and everything. 
it. So, okay. yeah, you get fully looked after when you come here from when you come in the door to when you leave. You don't need to bring anything with you, you don't need to sort your own food out or drinks or anything, it's, it's all kind of laid on for you. And this boils back to what we were talking about in various other interviews about the customer experience. Mm -hmm. About, and you know, in the old days, uh, getting your detailing products was a straightforward thing. You go to a shop or you buy online and that's that. Yep. But now there's a lot more support surrounding a lot of manufacturers. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people don't. What it is where it reaches the larger audience, people might not necessarily know exactly how to use some of the products to get the best from them. So I can remember from the old days there were some really good products out there, but once they got in the hands of people who just sort of Sunday car wash gang, they didn't really understand how to use them and they got a bit of a bad rep because of that. So that's why manufacturers make more of an effort to kind of teach people how to get the best out of them. Because when you know how to use a product, you they get better work better. I can imagine there's nothing more frustrating than having somebody troll online when they're just not using it yeah. correctly. <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> it does. You can educate them and hopefully this place helps with that. Indeed. Now, talking of products, yep. um, I wanted to see, I've seen you've got a line of bottles all labelled prototype and I had a sneaky peek beforehand and they've got handwritten what they are behind. Yes. I do like the idea of having a proper label for prototype bottles rather than just scribbled on. That was a, a favour from our label uh, supplier and one of the guys who was here today, he said, well, I've sort something out nice for you for the open day and I was like, yeah, that, that makes a nice difference it and does. just a little label stuck on there. But yeah, we've got some new bits coming out. Um, some of them are revamps of existing products mm -hmm. that are in the range. So. We've got these three new compounds which will replace our current Vitalize polishes. Yep. Um, we're finding they were good for the beginners, but they haven't kind of got the reach for the... Some of our customer base have got a bit more experience now and they're, they're wanting a bit more from them. I think that's the sign of the industry though, it's moving on. Now the yep. enthusiasts are at a much better level. Exactly. And certainly from my point of view, from a PVD point of view, we see a lot of people who are enthusiasts for quite a long time and then they either retire or they want a career change, whatever it is, and then they go professional. Yep. Um, and there's a certain amount of sort of wastage because they realise that doing your own car once every other week is pleasurable. Doing cars five, six days a week is it's not less, so much fun. That's <laughs> pleasurable. Um, I like that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> mm. but but um, at the same time, I think it's the product development side. How, how do you do the development? I mean, you're, I'm guessing you've got loyal customers who you will send yeah, out cars so to. Yeah, so a lot of it is detailers, but we've also got guys like you saying they, they like to just detail their own car from time to time. We put the products in a variety of different people's hands at different levels and see what they come back with. Like we say, we're more focused around the car enthusiast as opposed to the professional level. So yeah. professionals will sometimes want something slightly different from a product than an enthusiast. So we mainly focus on the enthusiast market. We'll put it in their hands and we'll give them a rough explanation of how to use it mm -hmm. so they don't get in too much trouble, but let them kind of figure it out for themselves and see what they come back with. Um, because if we explain it too much, we might miss some of the pitfalls of the products as well. Absolutely. Um, so and, and how long is the, is the development route to the product? I know it depends on the product. Glass cleaner is a bit easier to do than a, than a compound. Um, but are you talking sort of six months or, or that sort of region? Um, those compounds are probably two, two and a bit years. We've been trying to wow. get crack those really to the point where we want them. Um, and then other things come through quite quickly. It really depends. Sometimes stuff just happens fast and then mm. other times you're pushing water uphill to try and get something. Um, I remember a tyre dressing that we could never get anyone to do us a tyre gel. Um, we were working and working with people to formulate it for us and mm -hmm. then in the end we just kind of gave up and then we came back to it, we were having talks with different uh, raw material suppliers and they gave us kind of a, a, a bit of a different aspect of it and we looked at it a bit different and actually myself and Simon were not chemistry sort of background in at all, we just know how to clean cars well. We just had a bash at it and then we actually came up with a formulation for satin um, and then handed that over to a contract manufacturer who bulk produces that for us and mixes yeah. it for us but it was our base formulation. We've done that with a couple of bits now and yeah sometimes it's the people who formulate products are so deep into the chemistry of it they, don't they miss it. Yeah what it's trying to do and what you're trying to achieve by making it. So that's a, a bit of a problem we find and that's where we bridge the gap. We've got good people we work with now, especially on the formulation side, that they really know the chemistry and we really know what we want from it. So, so bringing those together, as long as you can, can communicate with them, they understand what you're talking about and you understand a bit what they're talking about, it works. But when neither of you kind of understand each other's languages, it's It difficult. can get frustrating. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, there are quite a lot of um, good brands out there that are developed by detailers mm -hmm. because they, and then they, like you say, and that's the reason because they understand what they want from a product whereas back in the day it would have been a board of people saying we want to make a car wax 
and the people formulating it and manufacturing it didn't really know what you want from a car wax or what the end user mm. would want. Well, they're made by vast chemical companies that are very corporate, and yep. it's just it's very much about making money and about the brand rather mm. than about kind of building good quality products, I guess. Yeah. Speaking of the corporate side, you have been, I think, you're probably the only product line that I know of in recent years to have made it into Halfords, yeah, uh, which is a serious, serious step. I mean, I know I, I, I used to run a small brand, and I know the Halfords guys, it's, it's playing hard to get in there and, and to be now alongside Autoglim and Maguire's ones that have been around for decades. Yeah, they're big brands, and we managed to kind of sit side by side with them. Um, elements of right time, right place, right brand, they're looking to kind of up their game and they're noticing that car care and car cleaning is moving on yeah. um, and they wanted someone to fill that gap and yeah, we were there. And how's it going for you? I mean, every time I go to a Halfords, which is actually surprisingly often because bits fall off my car and I need yeah. <laughs> double-sided oh, tape. I've got the cars like that, don't <laughs> um, And every time I go there, and there's tons of auto finesse there and people are buying it. So as long as it's selling out. I like it when the shelves are empty. <laughs> I mean, no, it's going really well. Um, we've put a lot of products through there. We've developed some ranges for them as well. Um, it's helping us reach that wider audience that we want, which is kind of the Sunday car wash guys and the people yeah. that have got a nice car and don't want to just go to the hand car wash but want to look after it themselves. They are sometimes hard to reach and they've really helped us with that and they've made the brand more accessible to the guys, even like show car guys, some of them are the worst. Um, they leave everything last minute, they're on the way to the show, they forgot all of their gear, they want stuff there and then to clean it when they get there. Uh, it saves them all running up to the van when we're trying to unload it, asking for products, they all stop at Alfred's and pick up, you know, shampoo, detailer, yeah. cloths, whatever they need, they can get it there and it's been well received. There's, Always a little bit of, you know, controversy with going into retail, but I, I wouldn't. I, I don't know. I, I think it's slightly overblown. I mean, at the end of the day, I know a lot of professionals. So if they suddenly run out of something, particularly if you're mobile, you zip into. Oh, they'll all go there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. they'll moan about it being in there as well. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, you, you know, having having a quality range in there. Not saying that AG and all the rest of it aren't, but having a, a range of more detailing centric products yep. is is very handy. Yeah, they've got some good products in there already, um, but we kind of fill that gap with going into. I guess Maguire's filled that gap well for detailing products, but mm -hmm. more into detailing being UK based, it, it works. And we've found that we don't cross over that much with the other brands that we're kind of competing within there. No, they've, they've got, got their loyal customers, and we've got a good loyal customer base that's bringing into stores to buy products. And it seems to be selling well, especially the kits and other bits and pieces that we've produced for them sell really well. Yeah, I've seen some really quite big kits at sort of 50, 60 quid, some of them, yeah. and, and they seem to be going off the shelves. Love them. Have you found, um, I mean, that's a different market in terms of volume and logistics and stock management and all that really boring stuff. Has yeah. that that's been an uphill struggle? <laughs> yeah, that's this learning curve, um, yeah. definitely for us, because up until then we've been mainly selling our products through online retailers, mm -hmm. um, and that market's great, but it doesn't reach the same people. It's very niche, isn't it? Yes. It's sort of the enthusiastic so they, they take a wide range of the products, but a few of them, whereas with this, they focus more on the sort of core fundamental range, cleaners and polishes. I don't want 20,000 bottles tomorrow, please. Yeah, yeah. so it, it, it's a different side of it. But we're coping with, with up to our production facilities, we've got automated lines now for filling, labelling, and we're just kind of keeping up and taking it day by day as it comes. We're an organic, organically grown business, um, so we never sort of work on projections of where we'll be next year or the year after, we let what come, comes and yeah. then we hand work all the to that. It's that balance between um, the kind of the knife edge almost, between fast moving consumer goods and everything's a commodity and then going to the kind of the luxury artisan market which you're sort of more familiar with. Yeah, well we still want to stay that, that brand that is, we'll never change our products to meet a price point, we'll make what we make and we hope we can get that out at a reasonable price, we're never going to be kind of the cheapest, that's kind of not where we're trying to be if mm -hmm. we wanted to produce a cheap shampoo. You'd need so much volume to do that and you'd be reducing quality yeah, in order exactly. to achieve you bulk that. it up with thickeners and water and stuff like that and it's, you know, it does serve a purpose and there is a market for that but that's not our target market. Well what I like is it, it, it seems to me that it's not actually you guys changing much for Halfords for this to happen, it's more that Halfords have decided they need to go a bit more Waitrose in their marketing if you like, I'm using lots of big names, I hope nobody sues us, but you know what I mean, it's in go, go so up your back. <laughs> yeah, <fine. laughs> um, yeah they're, they're, I think they're just seeing that, you know, what people want from car care, I think what's changed is Cleaning your car used to be a Sunday thing and it was seen as a chore, but anyone who sees it as a chore now just don't need to do it. If you're yeah. not that bothered about it and you just want a clean car, hand car washes serve that purpose. And for people with lease cars and company cars, they don't really care about them. That 
that's the job. So now you're finding people who are cleaning their own cars see it as a hobby and they take enjoyment for it. So with that, they'll reach for a luxury brand as opposed to just the cheapest brand. Um, and yeah, I just think it's the way it's changing and, and them adapting to that and seeing that taking note of it and taking a chance on a brand like us. No, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I remember when I was a kid a long time ago, it was very difficult because everything was black and white in those days. Yeah, um, <laughs> even but, life, yeah. <laughs> well, when you get your weekly pay through, if it had been a good week, I'd go and get myself some autoclaim. If it had been a great week, I'd go and get myself some Maguire's, and then I'd spend sort of six hours locked away not having to talk to anybody, which is, is quite a nice way of existing. Mm, sounds like a strange upbringing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get you going. <laughs> I know, I know. So one thing I want to talk about is, and as I mentioned to you earlier, is Caramics, because yes. I think they've been misunderstood how what is the car Amex range what is the aim behind it it's kind of a bridge between your car wax and your ceramic coatings mm -hmm. now a lot of people have got it kind of twisted around the wrong way thinking that it is a full bone ceramic coating on a wipe it's not mm -hmm. it's a bridge like your bridge cameras yeah yeah so that's a good analogy it, yeah. it's kind of there you haven't got to be a total detail expert to use them mm -hmm. like you need to be really to use proper yeah. ceramic coatings but it will give you that bit more than just your normal polish and wax bar. so that's kind of where it sits and then we've wanted to simplify it that's why we've put everything in the kit so you haven't got to think well what applicators do i use for this what polish do i use before it what's ipa to wipe it down with or mm -hmm. what's you know an alcohol base to remove any polishing oils we've just put it all together in a kit so you can pick that up and that's enough to do your car. It's got instructions in there. It's got all the pieces you'll need to do the car. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you wash your car first. You do any decon stages you need to do. You do the polishing, then to apply the actual coat, and you've got everything in that box. And the nice, I mean, what I quite often get, we get quite a lot of people phoning us up saying, "Oh, well, I need a professional." And you start digging into into the backstory and what they've done. It's got them found themselves a ceramic coating, quite a hardcore one, um, and they put on with zero prep work, and they've got high spots all over the place. And I, I always feel for whoever I refer them to because I know it's going to be an absolute. It's a horrible job yeah. to get rid of it with the ceramic stuff i'm guessing if you go a bit wrong you can actually you can polish it off you, you can, can polish, polish it off easily off. enough um, especially within the sort of first three or four days it'll come off very easy the whole coating stays pliable throughout its life okay and um, so when we were doing 50 50s in the early days we used to see that line spread a little bit just through washing and drying so it actually moves around which is nice because it means it stays pliable it sits level nice it's yeah. if you do get sort of low spots and high spots they settle out so that's why we went down that route. It's actually a ceramic resin. Gotcha. So it's still SiO2 rather than polysilane or anything yes. like that. Yes. So that's and, and durability-wise, what, what's I'm you'll get 12 months out there. You will. And um, it does come down to a, it's a little more based on the aftercare. So if you yeah. do wash it wrong, you can not wash it off, but you'll really deteriorate it quick using the wrong products on it. That's just a side effect of it being more forgiving. Yeah, so, exactly. You can't have something that's super tough, super easy to apply. But it's, it's one of those yeah, sort of balances. It, it's maybe not, it's not scratch resistant as the ceramic coatings that cure super, super hard, but you're not going to get in as much trouble with it. And that's kind of the, the key. It's a good introduction to ceramic coatings. Once you get used to applying something like that, you may step on to the more sort of hardcore coatings. Um, but it's bridging that gap. I think ceramic coatings suit a market and that is a detailer market professional detailers they're brilliant and i understand why they love them so much because you detail someone's car and it costs a lot of money to detail someone's car a lot of hours go into it especially the prep and the polishing if you're just putting a wax on it and say oh this is going to last three months well that customer instantly spreads that cost across three months it doesn't have great value you spread it across two years or a three year or even a five year coating or a ten year coating yeah. lifespan now well, it's become much better value, hasn't it? So yeah, absolutely. And also, again, with new cars, you look at the percentage of the cost of the new car, yeah. whereas a lot of the enthusiast cars, I mean, the cars around hell, the one I turned up is worth about 25p, um, <laughs> but still love it to pieces, and I yep. still want to care for it. I mean, I do sit there sometimes, I've, I've got an old pot of Swiss wax, which mm -hmm. I think was about 900 quid wax when I, when I got it, and I bought it second hand, obviously. Um, but I, sit, I still sit there putting it on my Subaru, thinking, this wax is worth more than the car I'm putting it on, but, you know. Still do it. Exactly, yeah. exactly that. Um, and I think it's, it's really nice to be sort of being engaging on those longer term things and ultimately from the enthusiast point of view you don't want something that you fit and then don't touch a car for five years um you no, know some I, people look after yeah I, and that's why we find the sales of sort of hard waxes are still so strong because mm. people do like to detail their cars especially enthusiasts if they're seeing it as a hobby well you kind of stop yourself doing your hobby for five years so yeah. i still remember back a long time ago in fact it was at the nec classic mm -hmm. and uh, these two brothers came up they were chronologically enhanced and um we at the time i was showing them there was this particular polymer sealant that lasted about six months, something like that. And they looked distraught because they were saying, well, 
we like to do our car every week. If it's going to last six months, what are we going to do with ourselves? Sell them a detail spray. <laughs> <laughs> spray wax, fine. <laughs> exactly. That's all they need. And, and so I think it's very much the experience. Um, anyway, we must move on. Um, we mentioned your prototype products. Yep. Do you want to give us a quick whistle-stop tour through them? Yeah, um, so like I said before, we've got the new revitalised compounds which have taken a real step forward. Chuck them over here so I can do a sniff and then show them to camera. Sniff, they smell like I love a sniff. They, they smell like compounds. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is revitalised number one, so I'm guessing this is an heavy aggressive yep. heavy compound. And you can see actually in, the, in the, it's not, it's very gloopy within the bottle. Diminishing abrasives in these, so the breakdown. Um, oh, cool. We're we're going kind of with the same colour code system that we've done before. Orange goes with our orange pad, yellow goes with our yellow pad, uh, pink goes with the red pad because we couldn't find it red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. yes, I can see a conflict there. Um, and I'm guessing these are DA suitable. Yes. Um, and I guess they work on rotary too. But they do work on a rotary. They're not quite as they're they're not quite as good as they are on a DA on a rotary. Gotcha. Um, they'll dry out a touch quicker because of the heat created from a rotary so they are really DA focused. And I, th I think this is an important thing to bear in mind with compounds is that there are some compounds that are designed for DA so they will break down easier and they'll work in a lower heat environment. And there are yeah. some compounds you use with a DA and they seem like they're not working and actually... Yeah they go on forever and ever and ever and ever yeah. Exactly and, and that's when when you've got the rotary they'll suddenly come, come together. Most enthusiasts even professionals now are moving towards DA. It's the safer option um, you find them with like synthetic wall pads and white fiber mm -hmm. pads that they cut just as quick as rotaries as well so gotcha so we've got the super strong we've got and then the uh, two this is your medium the medium cut and then you've got a fine as well for finishing fine finish some people will get away with just number two and, and number one mm -hmm. if the car's not too bad or a soft paint um, and then on top of that we've just brought out a new one step we've I been working that. on this yeah. for ages um, and this has come out incredible some of our guys the detailers here love this one and so the point of a one step is that literally you're using one product and the mm -hmm. idea is it can cut and refine uh, in in one go now ultimately you'll get more cut I'm guessing from the heavy cut yeah um, and ultimately you might get a better quality finish potentially from the light cut yep. but as an overall proposition for one product does all the idea is you're trying to get as, as good a compromise as you can yeah it's more for your sort of time stricken people who don't want to put a full weekend or multiple days into correction and they want to finish the car up in a week it, you know a weekend day like a Saturday or a Sunday you'll be able to do it with this and you, you'll knock about 90% of your swells out of the average vehicle quite comfortably with it you'll feel the weight difference between the others with that blimey yeah that's spooky isn't it so that's cost quite a lot to actually make as an individual product um, and to get the cut levels we wanted there's a lot of abrasive powder in there yes. and it's the only way you can get it to that. So you need a good wipe down to make sure you're pulling that out before yeah, you then put your LSP on. Yeah, you've got yeah. to load it up so it's the only way to get the cut level without it grinding in too hard and being too coarse of finish so that's true and this is again something that people talk about and they say oh it's got lots of fillers in there and actually all compounds will fill to an extent because they just need carrier their oils yeah exactly. you've got to have it otherwise it would just be a dusty mess and no one wants dust so. exactly and and furthermore um it's actually it, it it's good to wipe down anyway regardless of whether they're fillers or not because yeah. then that'll show you what how far you've got sometimes i don't Personally, if I'm putting a wax on, yeah. I don't worry about removing all the oils. I'll do spot checks to make sure I'm getting the right level of correction, and then beyond that, like, I'm happy with them oils to be there because they're enhancing the finish. I'm going to put a wax on there that will sit nicely on yeah. top of those oils anyway. And ultimately, wax feels slightly too, so yeah. you know that's so the point of it. Just leave them there. After that, it's another polished product, but this is our pre-wax cleanser. Up until now, we've had a pre-wax cleanser and a pre-sealant cleanser. Mm. We're going to try and combine those now. Um, so okay. we've basically come up with a paintwork cleanser that. It's fine with having sealants put on top of it. If you're putting something like ceramics on top, you'll still want to do an alcohol wipe down, but a normal sort of synthetic sealant will sit on top of this fine with no bonding issues. Um, and so with your waxes, it's nice because it's a slight more oily nature so you can do the whole car and then take it all back off. We like to make all the hand polishes that way as opposed to panel at the time. Yeah. Just because putting a bottle and applicator down, buffing the panel, switching around, switching around. So we've gone with that route. This one does smell nice. So Is it in the old days these used to be petrochemical which was brilliant, but I'm no, guessing you're not allowed to do that anymore. Oh I've just ripped your lid off. Oh it's a prototype, yeah. don't worry about that. <laughs> Oh, it does smell good. That smells like Man expensive li lady moisturiser, doesn't it? I don't wear expensive lady moisturiser, but if you do, then I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, one question I also wanted to ask mm -hmm. was uh, the market at the moment. We've identified that the enthusiast market is getting more enthusiastic and more yep. uh, engaged with it and educated. Yep. Where do you see that ultimately going? I don't know, really. Um, 
it always kind of changes. We've seen changes in show scene, how it comes and goes, and mm -hmm. trends kind of change around. I think what I've noticed a lot of is people seem to come into detailing and it kind of works like a wave for them. They get into it, they get really into it, and then they kind of settle down to where they want to be. You know, they have like a, a little surge at the start. Mean, they get yeah. right into it, and then they settle down to somewhere that's like a comfortable level for them. I guess it's like any sort of hobby. Um, if you stick at something, when you first start getting into it, you really get into it, and then you probably spend a bit too much time on it and think, oh, I should kind of rein this back. I might have a family in that. You should I was about to say, yeah, see yeah, once a month or something. Selling a child for a pot of wax. Yeah. <laughs> it's frowned upon in bit, certain circles. Bit, bit deep. So, <laughs> yeah, I think as new people come into it, you've got those people that, that mm -hmm. come up, and as places like this come out and products advance, as those people get educated on products and their knowledge will become better so people it will naturally get higher and higher level from that um, I'd like to see more people within the kind of car scene and especially people who own show cars taking a bit more of an interest in it because it's actually people that maybe don't own cars at quite the level you see on the podiums at shows yeah. that are more into it and it, it's sad really because they spend the most time on the car and they actually well, they put their heart and soul into it and don't get a lot of recognition for it yeah. and you'll get the guy who's built, they've built a beautiful car but they're not really detailing it that much maybe their interest lies elsewhere or they're just knackered from all the late <laughs> nights trying to get their wheels to fit but they don't tend to sort of spend the time doing that final detailing part so we're trying to kind of get those around to their cars would look better for it, and they've already spent all that time and effort on the car. I'd like to see them go that little mm. step more. So. Well, I have to admit, I mean, I do the odd bit of concourse judging, just wandering mm -hmm. around, just not as a main judge, but as a sort of assistant, just to basically so point out swirl marks. Stickers should be on tyres and all that. Like, no, no, that's what the real clever people do. Oh, I just right. sit there and identify swirl marks on the whole. But what's interesting is, um, particularly from a concourse po mm -hmm. point of view, if you go to the high-end concourses, um, all the cars are high-end anyway. Yep. But at the more enthusiast level, I've seen some of the best prepared cars are some of the worst cars, if you get my drift. Yeah. So you get, you get the, the really rare special Mark 1 Golf that somebody spent 40 grand doing up, um, and it's been, you know, it's not quite at the same level. And somebody's got a, a Mark 3 TDI yeah. that they've spent, you know, uh, God knows what they do with the rest of their life, because they must spent most of it Everything's on... perfectly clean. That's exactly. kind of what I'm talking about, and it, it doesn't kind of go through sort of top-end cars yet, but I'd like to see it. Yeah. No, I mean, I spend a lot of time trying to get people over the snobber of it. I mean, it's the same at Wax Stop. Maybe they're got... spending too much money on their cars and not enough on the product full that level i don't know so if you're thinking of getting an m140i what we suggest is get a 120d and spend the rest of it on car care products yeah and a training course here <laughs> um and again i, I noticed it with wax talk you know there's a lot of people get stick for bringing a, a brand new car in and they say well it's much easier to do that and then there are some classic cars that have been completely resprayed and are buried there and I, I really want to see i mean to the point where i'm tempted to enter boris our 300,000 mile outback which is not a sexy car but just to demonstrate what's been done i took the engine out in order to detail the engine bay. Well, I wouldn't probably advise going that far, but... Well, also we have to <laughs> it's kind of, dedication. It is. Um, <laughs> and to rebuild it and change it at the same time. I was about to say, yeah, there's a small technicality of the torque converter that needed doing. But um, I, I don't know, I find it very therapeutic doing it. But I think it'd be cool to see uh, at Waxlocks some um, crappy cars perfectly detailed rather yeah. than some sexy cars that aren't necessarily detailed that well. I agree, a lot of the cars that win um, at events are the newer stuff. Uh, yeah. It is easier to build. Um, there's a lot of work goes into getting an old car and then fully rebuilding that. And I, know, I found compounding on rust particularly really difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. You can't it's, get the gloss back. It's the pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. quite. Anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. Uh, okay. A final congratulations. As I say, today was an absolute triumph, I think. Thank you. Um, and I just love the diversity of people. I love the openness of it. Um, and it wasn't a big product sell. They, obviously, you've got your counter and people were buying around yeah. there, but it was more about, hey, this is us, come and, come and you know, talk to us. That's kind of what we wanted. We didn't want to do it as a big salesy day. We didn't want to try and sell people courses. We just wanted to open the door and say, if you're interested, come and have a look around, see what we're about, see what we're doing. Um, I think it worked well. It was, a lot of people turned up. It was a good churn of people as well. Um, the right faces and right names as well, which mm -hmm. is always good and it's important, especially with an opening. Yes. And, yeah, kind of see where it goes from there. But yeah, and if you'd first day. like to know more information, on the training, it's all on the website now. I yep, saw you press that's the all go right button. Now, yep. um, and equally, obviously, all the products are available through lots of auto finesse resellers and Halfords, yep, and you can buy them direct on your website, I believe, as well. Indeed, you can. So there's no excuse. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Cheers.